course is planning to base them in Madison, Wisconsin, where citizen and resident resistance is strong. The planes are used to target, traumatize, and kill black and brown people who resist U.S. imperialism around the world. Around the world today, more people are being forcibly displaced than at any other time in human history due to war and climate change. The F-35s can be retrofitted with no low-yield nuclear weapons, quote-unquote usable nukes. That is not acceptable. The Vermont Air National Guard's military use of our airport for poison land and waterways with forever toxic chemicals called PFAS. Even the U.S. Air Force was opposed to basing the planes here due to the human impacts. For 20 to 50 percent of students, Hearing the planes can cause memory, comprehension, and attention challenges due to kids' brains and ears being blasted and due to classroom interruptions. Currently, state and local authorities have made no progress on protecting our community from noise impacts, no progress on sound monitoring, and have no emergency plan in place in the event of an F-35 crash and the crash statistics for F-35s do not inspire confidence. The Air Force's initial report stated that the negative sound impacts would be felt disproportionately by poor, low-income, black, indigenous, and people of color communities. Yet, when Senator Patrick Leahy heard this news, the Air Force could base them here anyway. and his wasteful support for the deeply flawed F-35 program. We will not stand for environmental racism in our communities. The governor of Vermont could take legal measures to stop the F-35 training flights, but he stands with Leahy, Sanders, and Welch, with Lockheed Martin, and in obedience to capitalism, claiming that the militarized federal use of VTANG is good for our economy. Shame! We demand humanitarian missions only to promote the peace economy and the health of our communities. Our community response, watch and hold accountable all the militarized forces present in our society. Watch and record the cops. Do not call the police. Watch the Vermont Guard and the Air Guard. Watch the Vermont State Police, who showed up at the Burlington Fire Department on May 30th when our community was protesting the murder of George Floyd. Think it can't happen here? Think again, it already has. It is racist if the state police are only called for backup when black folks are protesting racist policing. in Racial Justice Has No Borders stated, neoliberalism involves seeming progressive but falling in line with systems that exploit black people. On May 30th, state police stood ready to defend property and capital and the livelihoods of murderers and abusers collecting paychecks from the Burlington Police Department. Were they there to protect the people? No! Donway said curfews and increased police presence don't keep us safe. We keep us safe. Right. We keep us safe through wellness policies we put in place in our own communities. The good news, and I'm seeing it right now today, is that the resistance is strong in Vermont. Look around you. projects and video recording police. Thank you. If you would like to get more involved with People for Peace and Security, you can find us and our campaigns on Facebook at Cancel the F-35, People for Peace and Security. Our current campaigns include collecting complaints ourselves because the National Guard can't be trusted to track
track our complaints accurately. We have a petition to ground the planes during the pandemic, which was a step that was taken in other localities without citizen unrest. And we have a Burlington F-35 airport boycott, which we invite folks who are able to join, particularly privileged folks, who need to make the first sacrifices to end this country's dependence on oil and colonialist pipelines, to do the work to stop climate change. The pandemic has made the airport less and less profitable. Let's keep it that way until the F-35 economic justice at UVM, we recognize that our fight is intimately linked to the struggle to all struggles against systems of domination. We stand in solidarity with the immigrant and immigrant farm worker community here in Vermont. We stand in solidarity with all of those who have been protesting day in, day out at One North Avenue. many millions who have taken to the streets in this country and around the world demanding revolutionary transformation. Woo! We too at Black Lives Matter UVM call on Vermont's lawmakers to work to end the deployment of federal agents against protesters, to defund and abolish CBP, ICE, the police, and the Department of Homeland Security. Woo! this summer. It reads, quote, I was an orientation leader summers ago 
and the chief of police came in to talk to us. They made a joke about using taser on one of our black orientation leaders. But it didn't sound like a joke. It sounded like a threat. They made other jokes as well. But the only ones regarding weapons or use of force were jokes about our fellow black students. Burlington, Vermont, you are not exempt from racism. Some people in this also liberal town can play dumb. But I know we have all witnessed the racism and white supremacy that BIPOC experience daily. I will end my speech on this note. If you're tired of hearing about racism and all the isms and phobias that plague our society, imagine how exhausted the people are who are living it. Imagine how tired this alumna is. Day in and day out, I'm sick and tired. End quote. That was from Riri. Black Lives Matter UVM published a list of demands for racial and social justice on June 19, 2020. None of them have yet been met. Shame! We will end now by reading a small excerpt of our demands. We demand that the University of Vermont seize any partnerships with the Burlington, Burlington Police Department immediately. We demand that the University of Vermont Campus Police Department be disarmed. In no uncertain terms, no more firearms, batons, pepper spray, or tasers on the University of Vermont campus. We demand investment in restorative justice and preventative models of campus security as prioritized alternatives to policing. We demand the gradual abolition of the University of Vermont campus police department in order to construct a more equitable health and safety system. We demand the permanent installation of the Black Lives Matter flag in front of the Davis Center. Thank you very much. Solidarity.
tenemos igualdad, justicia y oportunidad, pero cuando existen edificios como esto, no tenemos. es un gran mentira. Una mentira. In a country built by immigrants on the backs of enslaved and indigenous people, we like to say that we have equality, justice, and opportunity. But when buildings like this exist, it's a big fat lie. Yeah. Yeah. A mis hermanos y hermanas que son inmigrantes, o los niños y niñas de inmigrantes, gracias por todo que hacen en este en este estado grande. Y lo siento. No hay justicia cuando aceptamos sus trabajos, sus impuestos, pero no aceptamos su humanidad, humanidad. No hay justicia cuando aceptamos su corazón y damos la policía. Cuando separamos sus familias y aterrorizamos sus comunidades. To my brothers and sisters who are immigrants or children of immigrants, thank you for all you have done, and I am deeply, deeply sorry. There is no justice when we gladly accept your work, your taxes, but we don't accept your humanity. There is no justice when we take your heart and then give you the police. When we separate your families, when we terrorize your community. Tenemos que buscar donde está el dinero. Cuantos millones de dólares están en este edificio. En las armas, en las prisiones. Podemos usar este dinero para la gente, no para el odio. Podemos construir casas para todos, invertir en comunidades, en comida para todos, en agua limpia, en nuestros jóvenes, para todos. We've got to follow the money. How many millions of dollars were spent in this building alone? How much do we spend on weapons, on prisons, on those F-35s? God. Um, we could use this money for people, not for hate. We can build houses for everyone, invest in our communities, provide food and clean water for all, and invest in our youth. For everyone.
just thinking about the amount of people um, who come by screaming threats, um, the fear that someone at some point will come and harm anyone here. Um, and I want to take full responsibility for that. And I say that also saying that I'm here. As a black body, I showed up. I show up because no matter the amount of days I've had restless sleep, I couldn't fathom every night going to sleep in fear that you couldn't leave your county, your city, your hometown, and fear that everything your parents and your family has worked for will be stripped away. I see that knowing I can't fathom what it would be like to move to an environment, promise liberation, hope, and equity, only to fear that it'll be stripped away every single day. We have an obligation, a role, Everyone here has a role. If we aren't working every single day to make sure every immigrant in Vermont feels like they truly can actually possess liberation, hope, and equity, we are no better than the ignorant orange man in the fucking White House right now. <laughs> As what's been said already, we are not immune to racism, homophobia, ignorance altogether. More importantly, we're not immune to diversity, culture. And both can't go hand in hand. So as long as you're showing up here showing up at Battery Park. Understand that you are a voice for many, but more importantly, you are a voice for this country. That's right. We have a promise. We all must work our lives to keep. Understand that being able to stand here and not be pushed face down to the ground by these individuals is a privilege within itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lastly, the last written speech I gave was Black America. And as we walked down the street screaming our country, and we walked back, I want to make sure you realize that Black America is our America. Black America is an America for all. So we're going to start our march back. And this time, hold on, hold on. Before we start our march back, I want to make sure we make it very clear. You're here not only as a body, but as a voice. And with the amount of people here, they should be able to hear us all throughout this fucking city. So we're going to head that way. But understand that when you say no justice, no peace, or two part, two part chances like that, that is a moment for you to save your voice. Okay? So, let's practice. This has no justice. This has no peace. Alright? No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace!
deportation! Down, down with deportation!
collective resources should be put into building our culturally conscious skills to take care of each other rather than expecting a historically dangerous force to support our safety. We demand our cities and towns provide the public with access to free first aid training that is not done by cops. <laughs> Visitors and residents in our community with or without housing should not have to spend money in order to simply use the bathroom without concern of intimidation or criminalization. <laughs> we demand public and accessible 24-7 bathrooms on Church Street. <laughs> community members who have committed crimes related to their poverty and survival is unjust and must come to an urgent end. Woo! Putting people in prisons does not stop them from facing the abuses of our society. It produces and inflicts further abuse. We must stop seeing prison as a place to put people, the problems of our poverty out of sight so that we do not have to confront them. This begins by removing the criminalization of occupying public spaces. Things such as loitering, panhandling, soliciting, camping, sleeping, and public urination and defecation do not cause harm to the well-being of our community. These things are a fruit of a sick society, not a dispensable people. We demand the decriminalization of all non-violent crimes and current sentences being cut in half. Investing in services that actually serve our community safety and connection should in no ways be connected to systems that endanger our community. We demand public health services like fire and rescue be funded separately from the police departments. We demand the removal of all cops from community organization boards. And we demand no non-police city or public meetings to be held at police stations. As we continue the work of abolishing the institution of policing, it is critical that our community members have easy access to complaints filed against other officers without having to waste unnecessary resources. Community members also deserve to know what information this institution is collecting and maintaining on them. We demand ensured public access to all data collected by police departments, free of charge. are dangerously conditioned to interact with the police under false pretenses. Long before they learn the true history of policing and its generational impacts on our communities, for many black and brown students, the presence of police on their school campuses puts them on a fast track for entering directly into school to prison pipeline. We demand no more police workshops or visits to schools in the immediate removal of school resource officers. our community rather than in our control and dehumanization. We demand diverting 80% of funds from police departments to permanently end homelessness and provide educational funding for free school breakfast and lunches, technological infrastructure, and the transition to proficiency-based grading, lower class sizes, and decolonized education. state and local law enforcement officers seeking information regarding aliens encountered in the, in the course of their daily enforcement activities, then this is not for you. Right. Simply agreeing with these demands does not absolve you or me of the sins of our sick society, and we must actively work to counter them through political education, collective healing, and strategically fighting every barrier that keeps these in place. part of that ship. And by signing that pledge, you are not only saying, I signed the pledge and that is it, you must actively work towards those pledge points. Woo! This work does not start tomorrow. It is right now and it is yesterday. We build on the continual fight of our ancestors and we must know our history. Do not be someone who waits till tomorrow. For today, there will be another lynching. For today, there will be innocent bloodshed of someone's father, someone's mother, someone's child, my dad, or my sister. And for them, those people, tomorrow will never come. 
start today. Well, can I hear it louder? louder? intention, the intellect that has gone into those, the research, we need to clap louder. And before I announce our last speaker, I just wanted to let everyone know here who may not have picked up on this situation, that some of the leaders and organizers were told by the Williston police that if we took the street again, after leaving in front of DHS, that they would shut this protest down. Do we agree with that? No! Do we agree with that? No! This is what we're talking about. We are here to protest the police state and they are all over everything. So I want to invite up Rights and Democracy, Ozma. Is Ozma here? because my siblings before me like literally said what needs to be said. I was gonna say, why the hell were there police officers? Because I didn't feel safe, right? We were told, I live in the Upper Valley, and when we do protests, they try to threaten us too, and they say, if you do this or that, we're gonna do this or that. We show up anyway.
These rights belong to everyone, not just citizens or people with green cards or people with visas. Everyone! Woo! because I've been out at BPD for the past week with the activists there. I've been at marches, I've been at or, uh, activities organized by the Black Perspective. I've been on calls with the Black Lives Matter of Greater Burlington. And we truly are asking for everyone to step into the way that these issues are intersectional. know that the liberation of black people means the liberation of all people. And we're asking that if you care about any of these individual issues that you connect the dots, that you seek to learn and understand how they are intersecting and how together we can dismantle them. just be in the streets, and we also can't just be in the legislature. We need both. So Woo! for those of you who are here with us in the streets today, I expect you to have an active dialogue to a point where your representatives and their staffers address you by name and stop sending you form emails. It takes time, they will gaslight you, but we need everyone writing in, calling in, being relentless because oppression is relentless.
have next steps for you to take. There are more things to do. We need each other in this moment now more than ever. So follow Migrant Justice, the Black Perspective and Community Voices for Immigrant Rights on, on social media to learn more about upcoming actions. Uh, get involved with Migrant Justice's Milk with Campaign Dignity. This campaign is for large corporations to pay more for milk so local migrant workers can have better working conditions and wages. And you can get involved on their website. Start a No Mas Polymigra campaign in your town to create fair and impartial police policies that will ensure that police are prevented from collaborating with ICE. We already have successful ones in Vermont towns and we need more. You can get in contact with Community Voices for Immigrant Rights on their social media about how to get one started up. And right now, as people have said, there's a 24-7 protest, day in, day out, outside of Burlington Police Department. And people will be protesting until Joseph Crow, Jason Balavance, and Corey Campbell, scum of scum, are going to be fired. <laughs>